Hello, Abraham. It's wonderful to be here in your person. I have attracted wealth and fame, and I'm looking forward to be anonymous, so... <laughs> That old pendulum keeps swinging, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does, yeah. But what I'd really like to talk to you about for a moment is um, something called collective intention. I'm not looking to attract anything more into my life. I'm looking to see if I can uh, impact the world in such a way with my consciousness by getting myself in balance that I can impact others in such a way that we can get the whole world back in balance. Is that possible? Well, we are appreciating your words very much. But we are wanting to say that if you will start with the premise that the world is already really, really, really in balance. Mm -hmm. In other words, look at the things that are stable and acknowledge the perfection of that sun's coming up every morning and the food is continuing to grow. Things that are so big that you can't even imagine contemplating otherwise. And then from that place of aligning with the well-being, then you become an open vortex to well-being and a catalyst for the perpetuation of more things like that. When you come forth as a powerful teacher as you are, we can feel that for a very long time, the driving force within you, and so many, is to assist this world in becoming a better place. Inherent in that very premise is this little awareness that there are things about it that are not so much in a good place. And then, without meaning to, you activate that within yourself, and then you become part of the disallowance of it, and then there is a sort of perpetuation of the same. We would like to say that while it is absolute that weather patterns are absolutely influenced by the stream of consciousness, that when you look at it in that way and you say, so weather patterns or whatever is influenced by the stream of consciousness and therefore I would like to influence the stream of consciousness into a greater alignment in order to cause this effect, what almost always happens is your attention to the very thing that you think needs to come into alignment just gets it out of whack within you. So then it keeps coming back around to the same thing. The only thing that you can do anything about is your own alignment. And when you tend to your own alignment and live it through the power of your example, then what happens is those that get in vibrational proximity of it hear from you. You've learned long ago, as have we, that when you try to answer a question that hasn't been asked, it's sort of like pushing a noodle. In other words, it, it doesn't go very far. And, but when you are in vibrational alignment with who you really are, then the universe lines you up with those who are ready to ask, who are asking and ready to hear, and then on it goes. We do not see your world in a bad place. We see this contrasting experience as the catalytic experience that you all knew it would be when you decided to come forth. And we see more asking simultaneously than ever before. So the summoning of source energy is greater than it has ever been before. Which means those who are finding alignment with the energy are thriving in new and wonderful ways. And those who aren't are not thriving in new and powerful ways, you see. The best you can do for anyone is to thrive fully and be willing to explain to anyone who asks how it is that you're thriving and what it is that you've discovered. And then just relax and trust that all truly is well. So when others are not feeling good, yes. when children are starving, when um, the kinds of things that we call problems in the world exist, like if everything in the universe uh, in the world is perfect uh, then so is my desire to change it a part yes, of that perfection we agree. 
In other words, we think that that larger contrast in experience can give birth to a desire within you. And even though it's not personal to your experience because it's on the other side of the world, it is personal to your desire and you have the ability to create. We agree. And with war, for example. The words that you put out about war, um, about the Iraq war, very instrumental in, in, in changing around my uh, being angry every day at watching the news uh, at what was going on. And I made a clear decision that I was not going to be vibrationally matched up with anything other than peace and, and joy and perfection and beauty. And the war stopped. Stopped in here. But it's one of the more, most difficult things, I think, for us to, to grasp here as so here's, physical beings. As here's the it. easiest way for us to give it to you, and you already know this, you will hear this so easily. So you watch something that aggravates you and stirs your sense of injustice. And you know powerfully what you do not want. And in the middle of all of that is born a clear desire of what you do want. And so your desire shoots off like a rocket. But instead of following your own desire by imagining it and fantasizing it and letting it be the soothing idea that breathes life to you, so often, as physical humans, you keep looking at the conflicting experience that gave birth to the desire as if in the looking at that you will have further justification for your desire not realizing that the more you are justifying the desire and the more you are trying to garner support for your desire by pushing against what is wrong, the more you hold yourself in vibrational misalignment with all of that. So even though well-being can begin to fall into place, you hold yourself apart from it. It's not an easy thing to be an active uplifter and look right out into the middle of things that you cannot do anything about. When you see that there are intentions that are already in place and that things are going to move forward and that you would stop it if you could, but you can't. That's when we always say, do something that you can do something about, which is align your own energy. And then we soothe you, not in a sort of placating way, but we want to let you know the power of what you do. When you observe and feel the desire that is born from you. And then you get into alignment with it. You do carve a pathway for the future experience of that. And future experiences do happen beneficially from that which you have laid out. As you are focused upon what is happening around something like that and feeling the discord within yourself about it, Stop for just a little bit and relax and say, all of these people that are really in the trenches, so to speak, that are, are in the cities that are being bombed or that are in the cities where the food is slow to come, these are the people who are having the experiences that are asking of source in the loudest, most poignant way. And when you accept, and we so much want all of you to come to this soothed place of knowing this, that their cries are being heard and are being answered. But the content of their experience is keeping them from being in the place of allowing it. It's sort of like very often a person will sit in this chair and they will have a very piercing and powerful question. And as they ask the question, we give the very best answer that has ever been given in all of the universe. And everyone in the room hears it but them because they are so involved in the question that they are asking that they cannot receive the answer. So the same sort of thing happens to the people that are actually living the trauma. They are living the trauma and they are part of the equation that is doing the asking for more. And the universe is always hearing and responding. So as larger numbers begin to relax and allow the well-being that they can allow, then more well-being becomes the example of things. The reason that well-being is happening in such a predominant way in this continent is because it's your expectation. In other words, you want, but your expectation is not so far from what you are wanting. 
where in some of these other parts of the world, their expectation is very much closer to what they are getting, you see. So, unless you have some magical way, and you do not, and nor do we, and none of us would do it if we could, of superimposing our expectations over another, you have to accept that everyone is allowing to the degree of their ability. And that's where, as teachers, we all come in. We just, little by little, keep trying to expand their ability to allow more and more well-being. As you are able to interact without losing your balance, then you are connected to source energy. You're like a satellite dish that is beaming the signal in in a more powerful way. As you pay attention to the way you feel, and nothing is more important than that you feel good, so that you make sure that you've tended to that connection first and foremost, then there is nothing that you cannot influence for the better. And you can see C's part right before your hand. You do have that power of influence. But you've got to be tuned into who you are first and foremost before you apply it. Yes. Thank you. Yes, indeed. I feel good. Yes, you do. <laughs> I love you.